you know, been watching this Wall Street thing with anticipation, right? Waiting to see what's going to happen. Now, some of you think this has been a long time coming. Some of you think this is a recent development. But really, I don't think anybody has any idea how long this has been coming. See, this is all the result of a drug epidemic of unprecedented proportions that has taken in approximately the entire human race. It's an addiction I call noun addiction. And the victims, I call them noun junkies. These are people that are obsessed with things, with controlling people, and with putting fences around places. Now me personally, I've known quite a few of them and I've, I've, I've learned over the years how to deal with them. But many of you might have noun junkies in your family or your close circle of friends or at work. And maybe you're concerned and maybe you want to help them because you can see that they're trapped in this cycle of addiction and that they can't seem to see a way out. They don't even see that they have a problem at all. So I wrote this little guide on how to recognize noun addiction, how to treat noun addiction, and how to deal with your noun addicted noun junkie, okay? So bear with me and we'll go ahead and read this for you guys. Noun acquisition is the biggest pandemic gripping the nation. According to the latest statistics, there are at least 298 million noun junkies in the United States alone. The government has done nothing to curb the numbers. This is unfortunate as the epidemic keeps spreading around the country. While an overall outlook on the problem puts it in perspective, only a personal outlook is bound to hit home. Unlike heroin, crack, cocaine, and other drugs, noun, often called stuff, things, or property, is the biggest threat facing us yet. It's readily available, can be inexpensive, and can have far-reaching consequences both on the body and mind. Have you ever thought of the serious pandemic spreading to your home? What if a brother, a son, or a mother fell prey to this serious addiction? This article deals with these concerns, offering information on addiction, physical and emotional signs, and the best way to help loved ones quit the habit. So what drives people to acquire nouns at such unprecedented levels? The answer is threefold. They can be easy to use, cheap to concoct, and can work as an image booster and happiness substitute. Slave labor and mass conditioning, which are major components in noun production, are a legal component, high on demand from Asian labor markets and blue collar workers everywhere. Until recently, one could buy these workers over the counter from any employment agency or Chinese bureaucrat. Recent financial calamities in the United States now limit its use, but this has had only little effect. Noun is a psychological jambalaya whose components can be found in education, mass media, and even family tradition. Users can set up home labs or workshops where they can easily make cheap nouns by forming the original ingredients into things to feed their habit. As to its increasing use, it can be attributed to some of the marginal benefits it affords its users. Its original use was as a survival aid, easing starvation, thirst, and exposure to the elements. These days, nouns are widely used by partygoers as an intense posturing accessory and image booster to enhance their gift-giving experiences. Nouns in smaller sizes have been associated with weight loss and dieting for years. The problem lies in the ease with which a casual user can get hooked on the drug. Unlike cocaine, for instance, noun directly affects the release of want, a substance that increases cravings. Frequent spikes of want can lead to strong addiction bordering on obsession. Noun's toll on the body and brain? Well, the most disturbing sign of noun addiction is the classic noun addict's business-like face and collapsed sense of the value of human life. Because noun itself is material and not emotional in nature, it dries out the heart completely. Addicts begin to believe that they are suffering from everybody wanting to get their stuff. This leads to frantic scratching off names from one's friends lists, a process generally known as picking. Picking could lead to serious self-inflicted wounds, such as loneliness, paranoia, and in extreme cases, agoraphobia. Some physical signs are manufactured smile, Bluetooth headset, and or a cosmetically altered nose, jaw, or chest line, expensive vehicles, and or houses. Noun dries out the fun completely and leads to stone grinding of the nose and human compassion collapsing inward. Other symptoms include a flushed appearance, severe weight, boundless greed, deep and excessive sweating, and in some cases, Botox paralysis. On an emotional level, the effect of noun addition, addiction can be equally visible and devastating. Some of the emotional signs of noun abuse include obsession with responsibility, 
child neglect, and stealing, legally or otherwise, to pay for the drug. Just the thought of acquiring noun can keep a user high for hours, days, even weeks, unlike cocaine or heroin, which only lasts for a couple of hours. For someone on the mend or looking to sustain the habit, this can lead to serious bouts of violence. Give me that stuff or I'll... Paranoia. People are standing between me and... And suicidal tendencies. I can't go on without my things! While any addiction can be difficult to cure, you don't have to be versed in the intricacies of noun to lend a helping hand. In fact, family support is one of the most important factors in combating the addiction. If someone you care about is affected, the best thing to do is acknowledge the addiction and seek professional help. Ignoring the problem or bailing out a noun addict by feeding his habit will only keep him ensnared in the addiction. Next, you should seek professional help by volunteering with them at a qualified community outreach clinic or noun-specific treatment program which addresses the underlying emotional causes of the addiction. In addition, random acts of monetary charity with no thought to the worthiness of the recipient have been found helpful in providing noun addicts with the perspective they need to recover. Noun recovery clinics concentrate on relieving want and the emotional response to it. The patient is given noun in adequate doses to relieve cravings and withdrawal symptoms. This aims to recalibrate the patient's sense of compassion and break the cycle of addiction over time. One problem with this approach is that it was designed for treatment of heroin, cocaine, and other known drug addictions. Noun can last for years and lead to a lot of withdrawal and relapses over the long run. Unlike the traditional pharmacological approach to drug addictions, a number of treatment programs are now tailored specifically to deal with addiction to noun. These programs go beyond calibration to prepare the addict for long-term recovery. The patients are coached individually or in small therapy groups of four to six. They're taught about their addiction, ways to manage their cravings, and how to avoid nouns that could trigger a relapse. To have someone in your family fall prey to noun addiction is tragic and heartrending. Both the physical and mental strain can trump their desire for a real life and keep them ensnared in the vicious cycle of acquisition. However, they do not have to live with it throughout the rest of their life. You as a family member or close friend can do a lot to help them find a way out of their addiction. Start by facing their addiction head on and refer them to an appropriate outreach program. Even after they've completed their treatment, there's still a lot you can do. Noun cravings take longer to subside than any other drug. Your support, guidance, and help are required to ensure that they turn their life around and stay free from the insidious stuff for good. Anyway, I hope that helps some of you deal with your noun junkies that you have in your houses, your homes, and your lives. I hope you figure out a way to bring them back around so they can come and enjoy real life with the rest of us instead of obsessing over nouns. And until next time, I hope you realize that your brother loves you. And I'll talk to you later, okay? Bye.